Thank you for coming, and thank you for just waiting a few minutes on us. We had some uh, traveling arrangements going on, but we all are here now. So what we're going to do is introduce the dais right now, and so we can get started and you can eat, because I know a lot of you, like me, didn't eat. Okay, and I'm going to start at my right, uh, Reverend Frazier from uh, St. John AME Zion Ch Church. <laughs> Reverend John Walker, Associate Pastor of Conti AME Zion Church. <laughs> Ms. Frankie Johnson, Leaders of, Le Le Leaders of Leaders of Conti AME Zion Church. <laughs> Maria Osborne, a family friend and assistant at uh, Trinity AME Zion Church. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Archie Payne, he was Reverend Whitaker's uh, Pastor Stewart at Union AME Zion Church in Delaware. Yeah. Reverend William Dent, Pastor at R. L. Jones AME Zion Church. Yeah. I'll start all the way at my left at the end, Carl Profeta, Trustee Chairperson, Conti AME Zion Church. <laughs> Reverend Rita Colbert, uh, Dr. Reverend Rita Colbert, Presiding Elder. <laughs> <laughs> and all of you that was at church this morning, you heard our magnificent bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Richard Thompson. The man of the evening, Reverend Whitaker. Yeah. Our first lady, Yvette Whitaker. Yeah. And our master of ceremony today, Reverend Daryl Gaskin. For those of you that do not know Reverend Gaskin, I'm going to introduce him right now. But let, before I do that, let me introduce myself, because a lot of you do not know me. Okay? <laughs> I am Evelyn Lucas, Pastor Stewart, Conti AME Zion Church. I have spoken to a lot of you on the telephone and while we're getting everything arranged, but that's who I am. And thank you for coming. Uh, Our Master of Ceremony, uh, Reverend Dr. Darrell J. Gaskin, has served Beth Shalon AME Zion Church as a pastor for 22 years. He has been preaching the gospel for 29 years. God called Pastor Gaskin to minister the gospel of Christ in a very practical manner. He loves preaching and teaching the Bible. He explains the word of God in a way that many find easy to understand. Each week, he gives his members and guests of Beth Shalon a handout that highlights the main points of the sermon. This allows them to review the, the messages at home and understand what God is trying to tell them. Pastor Gaskin is a graduate of Brandeis University in Waltham, Massachusetts. He earned his master's degree in economics from the Massachusetts <coughs> Institute of Technology and his PhD in health economics at from the John Hopkins University. He is Associate Professor of Health Economics and Health Pol Policy and Management at the John Hopkins Blooming Bloomingburg School of Public Health. He is married to Mrs. Deneen Gaskin and has two lovely daughters. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to the Master of Ceremony. Well, um, thank you, um, Sister Lucas, for that very kind uh, introduction. It is certainly a joy and a pleasure to see all of you on, on this wonderful, wonderful occasion. I couldn't think of any place to be on um, this afternoon than to be here with my good friend celebrating uh, 30 years of ministry. And, and that, is, that is quite a milestone and it's, it certainly is a time uh, to take pause. And I can see already that this is going to be a great celebration because obviously you left all this space out here 
Uh, is, is anybody supposed to be dancing or jumping up and down? Oh, okay, so we, we are, are expecting. So I hope that you all brought your dancing shoes. And when um, Brother Matthew plays the music appropriately, uh, you know when we get ready to do, um, what is it that you do, the lecture slide? Oh, no, no, different event, huh? Okay. But nonetheless, we are, we are looking forward to having an ecstatic, wonderful um, um, day uh, in celebration of Reverend Whitaker. Now, I understand that, that some of you may have been expecting actually to be eating right now. And so what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to try to help you out, all right? And so uh, I'm going to be somewhat um, judicious and deliberate, and we're going to ask uh, my good friends who are on the program to come and, and, and do what they do best. So um, we're going to first call for the, the invita um, invocation by the Reverend Dr. John Walker, and then following that will be a musical selection from uh, Miss Angela Whitaker, amen? Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, most holy and righteous God, the author of every good and perfect gift, we come before you at this time calling upon you to be with us and bless us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and fellowship together. We thank you for the occasion for which we have assembled. And we just ask that you will anoint and bless this event, that it will be meaningful in our lives. And bless and anoint your servant, Lord God, that he would have many more years of, of ministry. Now, Heavenly Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to take over, take charge, to dwell within us, to be with us and lead us. And let it be that the things we say, do, and think in this place at this time will be pleasing in your sight. And we will forever give you the praise and the glory. This is our prayer we offer in the name of Jesus. <coughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> God the walks so 
bless her brother Matthew who was accompanying her. Amen? Amen. 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 Now we're going to ask um, Sister uh, Frankie Johnson to come and give us the welcome. And then we're going to have another youth from, from Conti, uh, Brittany Briscoe, come and give the inspirational grace. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Bishop Thompson, missionary supervisor, presiding elder, Pastor Whitaker, first lady, minister, visitors, members, and friends. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm honored to welcome you this afternoon to the celebration of Pastor Samuel W. Whitaker, 30 pastor anniversary, 30 years in the ministry for a man of power and grace. All right. I am grateful that you are here today to share this important and incredible occasion, the anniversary of our pastor. It is my hope that you will enjoy the day with us and that you will be strengthened in the bond and fellowship that bind us together. On behalf of my pastor, the First Lady, members of Conti Amy Zion Church, I am delighted to welcome you. So I, on behalf of the old faces, here I welcome the new faces with open arms, with a smile, and an open heart, and above all, I welcome you with love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. May you bow your heads with me. Lord, we thank you for these 30 years that we have spent with Pastor Whitaker and we just ask that you will bless us with many more. Lord, we ask that you please just bless the food that we are about to receive and bless the people who made it. And let it be for the nourishment of our bodies. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> now, I think I did pretty good getting you to dinner, didn't I? Yes. I think I did all right, right? So we're going to now turn it over to the, the staff here, and they're going to provide us with a delicious meal. And I ask that you would also, during this time, take a moment to look at the front of your bulletin, your, your program. This um, um, cover was commissioned just for this particular event. It was designed by Sister Deanna um, Bowler. It is a piece of art. Sister Diana, are you here? Let's give her a hand. So please take a look, and if you, it, it is an original piece of artwork, and since the artist, artist is here, you might actually ask her to sign it, and you can ask the honoree to sign it, and it would be a really nice keepsake. Amen? Amen. Of ministry and we want to um, continue and now focus on our honoree for um, the evening. Now, I um, was told that um, the pastor of Beth Shalom and the pastor of Conti and the pastor of R.L. Jones was talking and the pastor of Beth Shalom said, you know, I have this problem. I got this family of, of raccoons. <laughs> they, are, they are living in the, the um, attic of the church, and they're just making a whole mess, and I'm wondering about how to get rid of them. Well, the pastor of Conti said, well, why don't you just call um, Orkin or, or, or Home Paramount and let them come over and fumigate the place, and that'll get rid of them. <laughs> 
And then the pastor, R.L. Jones, scratched his head and said, I got a better idea. I said, why don't you just baptize them, make them members, and you won't see them anymore? Because when I baptize people and make them members, I don't see them either. So now I want you to understand that that pastor of R.L. Jones is not the pastor of this, this pastor of R.L. Jones. <laughs> But we have with us today um, one of our, our dear friends in the ministry, um, the Reverend William Dent, who is the pastor of R.L. Jones AME Zion Church. And he is going to come and give us the statement of occasion. Amen. Come on, Brother Dent. I have been appointed to give the uh, statement of occasion. And so what I'm going to do, uh, not yet, I'll give you the cue. <laughs> I am going to be a reporter and my name will be Tuki Robinson. <laughs> All those that know me, from Conti, I'm Tookie Robinson. I'm coming from the great uh, Lafonte Blue, giving this report about a celebration that is going on at this time. Uh, am I on? Are you receiving me now? How, can y'all can y'all hear me? I mean, no, 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 no. I'm I'm pretending that you know. I want the cameras on me. Okay. <laughs> This is your reporter coming from the LaFonte Blue. Take the mic off here. You gotta tell me what to do. All right, now, y'all can hear me now. Oh, oh, all right then. This is your reporter coming from uh, LaFonte Blue, uh, Tookie Robinson. And we are in the dining area here celebrating 30 years of celebration uh, for one man that has served God in his own right. I'm so happy to be here with them and him and his lovely wife and uh, church members and friends. They, this place is full. I just wish y'all at home could see the, the magnitude of this great hall. Uh, we, I am sitting here with some distinguished guests here and little old me and I happen to notice that every man has on a black suit or a dark suit and I'm the only one to have on a brown suit. Mm. Something must have went wrong there. But anyway, you, I understand uh, from some folk that this young man uh, served, uh, uh, started out in Trinity Amy Zion Church. Yeah, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. And I understand that he uh, uh, worked his way through serving the Lord as a young man. And then he uh, became a uh, part of the ministerial staff under the former uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Uh, Richard K. Thompson at that time. But now, uh, the uh, Dr. Thompson was elevated to bishop now, and he's still serving under the same person again. Isn't that strange? <laughs> and as I looked in, in, in I started thinking about the, uh, the spiritual part, and I happened to look at uh, 1 Samuel 3 and 1. You know the story how uh, Eli was the, uh, the prophet and, and uh, uh, that uh, his mama, Hannah, Say that she ever had a child that she would bring him back, give him back to the church, so forth and so on. And the baby was born and she kept her word. And he said, this guy named Samuel, isn't it strange that Samuel, Samuel, isn't that one? Isn't it? Samuel, Samuel. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you go, story goes on that uh, uh, going into the ministry that he was called uh, Samuel, was called three times, and on the fourth time, uh, his uh, Eli told him to uh, answer and said, your servant is here, speak. And I assume that's what this Samuel must have done when he heard uh, the calling to the ministry. Not only that, 
I looked up uh, in Proverbs 22 and 1, and uh, it was talking about, and I'm using the uh, English version, it says, a good reputation over great or riches for being held in high esteem is better than having silver and gold. Silver and gold will run out, but a name will carry on. Uh, and this young man here that I have known over the years, uh, I would say he wasn't following me, but it seemed like every time I turned up, he was at one church and I met another church and we were all on the same district. And wind up, uh, uh, when I left the east, uh, or from, uh, um, hmm? yeah, Salisbury, thank you, not Salisbury, Wallace Temple, that's where it was, he wound up coming back to Conti, so it was something there that that man had done. The other thing is, while we are celebrating this man, is that he is a, a great father, a great father, and he's a people's person also, and if you love this man, you will love him. And in fact, you love everything about him, including the freckles on his face. Amen. <laughs> I get you, brother. My turn. The presiding elder is here. And if you know anything about a presiding elder's job, a presiding elder is supposed to be, be being woken up in the middle of the night and say, present the bishop. And they can do it. I've seen it happen where right. they just seem like the, they say present the bishop and point to one of the presiding elders and they get up mm -hmm. and they can just do it with such um, authority and would be so informative and, and it's with the excitement that is needed. I think it comes with the job description of presiding elder. Um, it, though I, I it might be in the discipline with first thing present the bishop. So I'm going to do one of my other favorite activities, which is to present the presiding elder of the Washington District, uh, uh, certainly a woman of God who loves the Lord, who loves the church, uh, and who loves, really loves the district, not only in its collection of societies, but also the individuals who make up the district and really tries to be a pastor to all of us pastors, and I appreciate that about her. She certainly does not need an introduction in this house, because we all know her, and I'm gonna ask her to come, because we're gonna ask the bishop to give his remarks before we have the liturgical dance from angelic expression. So we're gonna ask now at the Reverend Dr. Rita J. Coburn, presiding elder of the Washington District, if she would come forward. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Amen. Isn't this a wonderful celebration? Yeah. Every now and then, we just need to get together to love on each other. Amen? Amen? And what a wonderful opportunity. I love that we have an opportunity uh, to come together and just celebrate uh, how good God has been and what God continues to do in the life of a servant. And this servant is... Um, uh, Samuel Whitaker on today. Uh, but I also have the distinct pleasure of, and, and this is a good thing, because most of you, 98% of the people in this room already know Bishop uh, Richard Keith Thompson. And so I really am not introducing him, but presenting him to you on this afternoon. If you know anything about the AME Zion Church, you know that we go through a process of electing our bishops uh, on an international level. And I like to say, and I said it the other week, and I kind of like that, that we were, uh, I think it was the 44th session of the General Conference, uh, and the smoke went up. You know how it went up for the Pope? <laughs> the white smoke went up. And when the smoke went up, we had an 86 bishop in succession of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. And lo and behold, it was the right Reverend Richard Keith Thompson. You know that he is the uh, father of Richard and uh, Carrie. You know that he has four grandchildren. You know his beautiful, dynamic, uh, 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 wonderful wife, 
I, I love her. She knows I love her. I love the way she moves around and the way that she interacts with us. And they are, we're just so happy to have them back home. Is everybody as happy as I am to have the bishop back home? I know you are. And, and they're always trying to figure out how did, how did Bishop Richard Keith Thompson get back to Washington, D.C.? I don't say a word. Mom is the word. They don't know that the Washington district is a praying district. And what we pray for happens. A am I right about it? The proof is in the pudding. The proof is sitting here at the head table on this afternoon. So will you join me in saluting the man of God that we came to love in so much and feel so blessed to be under his leadership, our Bishop Richard Keith Thompson. Would you stand and salute him with me and give God a hand praise. Uh, please be seated. Thank you very much, President Elder, for your very kind introduction. Uh, to all of our, well, to our presiding elder, all of our pastors and other ministers of the gospel, to our honoree and his beloved wife, I greet all of us in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We now I'm sure somebody is wondering why has the bishop crashed this program? <laughs> <laughs> that the program says that he comes last. But what it is, you know, I'm really tired today. Uh, I've been traveling. Uh, I had a checkup meeting yesterday in Virginia. I drove back to Washington last night and was in church today, and I'm here now. You know, there comes a time you just need to go and kick your shoes off. Oh, mercy. Yeah. Mercy. And I, I thank Reverend Whitaker for understanding of the fact that uh, you know, the body does get tired, and uh, we just need to go and, and get some rest. But I wouldn't miss this moment for anything, for this is indeed, as I see it, a very redemptive moment. And I'm so glad that Reverend Whitaker's parents are here. Amen. And I'd like for them to stand, his mother and father. Now, uh, uh, wh while they're standing, uh, I need to know, Sister Whitaker, have you forgiven me? <laughs> She's forgotten. Many years ago, many years ago, uh, you know, Reverend Whitaker grew up Roman Catholic. You all knew that. And when he met Yvette, something happened <laughs> that, that caused a complete turnaround. And the next thing I knew, he was coming down the aisles at Trinity joining the church. My, my. And Miss Whitaker thought that I was responsible <laughs> for Reverend Whitaker leaving the Catholic Church joining the Methodist Church. I said, no, don't be angry with me. You better talk to Yvette about that. <laughs> but it's so good to have them out today. Uh, so good to have them. And uh, Reverend Whitaker certainly is a credit to his parents. Um, the other thing that I, I would remember, uh, some of us remember Yvette's late mother. Uh, Mrs. Casey. Yeah. Now, Mrs. Casey will, will never die as long as Yvette lives. Amen. That's right. uh, Mrs. Casey had that, uh, that, that uh, infectious smile and a wonderful personality and all of that. And it's embodied not only in Yvette, but in Christina yes. and in Angela yeah. and, and in Dwayne. And where is Hubert? <laughs> there he is. So, you know, th th this is just a very special, special moment. And, and I remember uh, when Reverend Whitaker uh, came to me 
He said, it's been 30 years. I didn't, that time has gone by real fast. <laughs> and, and told me that, uh, that God had called him to preach. And uh, I, I, I wasn't surprised. But I, I, I've always shared with him that uh, he needed to go to school. You know what he did? He went to school. And he graduated. And he's done so much work after that. Uh, which told me that he was serious about ministry. Because I firmly believe that when God calls a person, he gives that person time to prepare. And that's what he's done. And what I've always respected about this man is that Reverend Whitaker is very sincere about ministry. A hard worker. Uh, he doesn't ask anybody else to do what he's not prepared to do. Uh, a very hard worker. Uh, and uh, the thing about it, he doesn't get upset easily. Now somebody ought to say amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> and if he does get upset, you wouldn't know it. Uh, somehow God has given him double grace that uh, he won't get bent out of shape. Uh, but he, he knows what, what he's about. Uh, personally, he's been a good friend of mine because uh, as we were coming up to General Conference, he always said that I was coming to Mid-Atlantic too. And I wondered how did he know? <laughs> because the politicians were saying something else. Mm. Uh, but uh, he never wavered. And uh, I hope you all don't hold it against him <laughs> if, if, <laughs> with my being here. But we certainly uh, appreciate him. We pray God's blessing upon him and his family. Uh, and that uh, as he moves forward, it does not yet appear right. what God is going to do That's through right. him. Right. And, uh, and what I've also learned is that you cannot put perfume on somebody else mm -hmm. and not retain a little for yourself. Right. And so we're here to place that fragrance upon you. Pray God's blessings upon you continually that you might not look back, but look forward and go forward and truly be all that God is calling you to be. May God bless you. Amen. Let us now have a presentation from the liturgical dance angelic expression. Hello, everyone. So um, some of you all know my dad, Reverend Whitaker, and, um, but something you might not know about him is deep down in his heart, he really wants to be a dancer. <laughs> I mean, these girls, <laughs> they practice every week, and just about every week he will show up and try to contribute a move or two. He's known to do the running man. The little disco fever move. And they just laugh at him and say, you know, we'll think about it. We'll try to incorporate it. They humor him. Um, but no, we wanted to do a tribute to him tonight. Um, a godly man, is, his steps are ordered by God. And so we really wanted to show this um, in the way we best know how. And that's through dance and through ministering. So I'm sorry their backs are facing you, but you'll get the point. Um, and yeah, thank you.
Wasn't that absolutely beautiful? Yeah. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, wasn't it? It, it, certainly, it certainly did speak to my heart, and I, I hope that it, it certainly spoke um, to your heart, too. Um, now we, we, we come to the part in our program where um, we really get to, to learn, in a real sense, you saw the picture presentation, but uh, you really get to learn why we are in, in fact here. And um, I remember when, when I was a baby preacher, <laughs> I, was, I, I was a little baby and, and the Lord knew that I needed a friend. He encouraged me to um, reach out to your pastor, Reverend Whitaker, and, and invite him and his lovely wife over to our house for dinner. Now, me and my wife, we were just kids, and, 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 and they, were, they were, you know, our seniors, and we needed, we needed, some, we needed some role models to, to sort of help us out in our, our journey. And uh, they came over and they had uh, dinner with us uh, at our home in Baltimore. And um, it was just a real good time. Uh, they brought along with them Matthew and um, Christina. And we just fell in love with the family. And our families have been uh, knit together uh, ever since. Um, I would encourage you that if, if God gives you a good friend, you make sure that you hold on to that good friend. That's true. Because uh, good friends are, are hard to come by. But uh, if God blesses you so much that you can have a friend who you can call a brother, but you were birthed by different mothers and different fathers, but nonetheless you feel that close to, that uh, you hold on to um, uh, that friend. I know when Reverend Whitaker was pastor at uh, St. John's and I was at Beth Shalom, we um, um, would do things like um, we were part of the young adults in Christian ministry and we would work with, with the district Yakim and serve food to our blankets, deliver blankets to the homeless. And we just would just have a good time just doing all sorts of, of different types of activities together. And um, um, one of the things in which we would do is we would round up our folks to go to mass meeting and it was a, to see who could have the most people show up at mass meeting and take home the banner. And um, um, sometimes St. John's would take it home and sometimes <clears throat> Beth Shalom would take it home too. <laughs> and, and so we were just having but, uh, just a wonderful time. And since I was you know, a little baby pastor and he was a, a young man pastor and we had all those other older pastors ahead of us, um, that um, um, we were just, just delighted to, to serve together. But I want you to know, how many of you were here, how many of you were there 30 years ago when uh, Reverend Whitaker gave his trial sermon? How many of you were here? If y'all just stand up so the rest of us can see you. If you were at the time when Reverend Whitaker gave that trial sermon, if you were here, just stand up. Amen, amen. Let's... Now, you may be seated. Now, I want you to know that, um, uh, as the bishop said, it is Sister Whitaker's fault. <laughs> it is Yvette's fault that we are here today. Uh, as the bishop said, um, um, Pastor Whitaker came to Trinity Church um, because Mrs. Whitaker was there or invited him to be there. <laughs> and then he invited her to come to Jesus there. And then Jesus there called him into ministry. But it, it started with that first invitation that came from 
this one whose fault it is. <laughs> and, 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 you know, unlike like some, um, um, you know, like my wife, she married the minister. You know, this one made a minister. <laughs> um, you know, so, I mean, she went out and found them and brought them in and, you know, Go ahead, Pastor Go ahead. Whitaker, she made her minister. Her minister. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to hear uh, right now some um, uh, remarks uh, from this beautiful spirit, wonderful um, first lady of Conti AME Zion Church. Um, um, you all know her, uh, Sister Yvette. Whitaker. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Gaskin. Good evening, everybody. I just want to say um, it's been a pleasure being in the ministry with Sam. Sam is, is the most hilarious person you ever did want to know. He's very serious and committed into anything that he does. Um, I was praying about it, and I was trying to figure out, Lord, what to say, because every time I um, was thinking about something to say, somebody came up and said it. And so um, I, I just asked God what to say, and he told me, um, he asked me this question, what do you think kept you in ministry for 30 years? And I said, hmm, I don't know, Lord, what kept us in ministry for 30 years? And he told me the first thing you have to do is know whose you are. And Sam found that when he joined the Bible study at uh, Trinity, when he was just coming out of um, high school, he joined the uh, youth Bible study there, and he got excited about um, um, going to church, and he gave his life. I remember in, in December of our uh, 12th grade year, he gave his life to the Lord, and, and he was saved, and he was so on fire. And he um, went to every Bible study, every Sunday school there was, and, and anything that he did, he was just really committed. He was so committed that, that uh, Reverend Thompson had made him, he was Reverend Thompson then, had made him uh, chairman of the Alkalites, and he um, enjoyed doing it so much that, um, when he came to Bible, when we got married, and he went to Bible, uh, son, Bible study, and he got so excited about the word, and then he went to uh, choir practice one day, and he came back home. He was a little different that day, <laughs> and I said, "What's wrong with you?" He said, "I got called to the ministry." I said, "What kind of choir practice was that?" <laughs> I said, "What happened?" He said. I was just sitting, I was there, they were practicing, and I heard it. And I said, what? <laughs> so, I said, mm hmm okay. <laughs> I was so excited for him, because Sam is not one of those people that once he hears something, and once he's committed to something, he doesn't back off. He stays committed, so he, he um, the first thing I knew you had to know who you were, he gave his life to the Lord, and he um, was um, accepted by the class leaders in our class leader system to, to, um, to be able to preach. And we, um, at the end of our ministry at um, Trinity, Sam left with a full, complete set of Jimmy Swaggered Bibles. <laughs> we had, um, <laughs> we had every Bible that you could think of. We had um, um, Bibles from Muslims. We had every Bible that everybody gave us Bibles that they um, that they had. And we were on our we were on our way to uh, we got uh, Sam got called to the, to be the pastor at St. John, and so the second thing was to know who you are. Because first thing you had to know who you are. The second thing you got to know who you are. When we got there uh, at St. John, Sam. 
forgot that he was Sam. In our first service, when we, um, you know, the choir was singing and we were singing um, a hymn. And one thing, if you know Reverend Thompson, he will always say, now why don't you sing? He would always say that. So I turned around and I looked at Sam and Sam was saying, why don't you sing? <laughs> and, and I said, and I was looking at him and I said, oh, I know. I'm Georgia Thompson. So I sat there and I sat there and I was just waving his smile just like Georgia Thompson. And so that was the first thing. So the first thing was no you had to know whose you are. The second thing was know who you are. And the third thing was know your purpose. When we um after um leaving St. John, we went to we were called to go to our Union Amy Zion Church in Delaware. And when we first heard our name to go to Delaware, we were like, I don't believe it. Going to Delaware? Mercy. Delaware to go to church? Yes, sir. But when we went up there, there were some of the nicest people you ever did want to, you ever did want to meet. And when we went up there, um, Sam just reminded us that you know, he always told us as a family, he always told us as a family that, you know, that he was called to this ministry and no matter wherever he was, he, wherever God sent him, he was going to go. So we went happily up the road. <laughs> and just like Christina said, every gasoline station, Sam would get out of the car and do the running man <laughs> to keep us entertained, to make sure that, you know, that we, we kept our sense of humor. The next thing um, we did, the next thing you have to do is endure the test. Now, enduring the test was when we were up in Delaware, we were all dressed, getting ready, time was close. One shoe was in D.C. and one shoe was in Delaware. <laughs> and that was one of our first tests. What do you do about one shoe being running? <laughs> so we ended up wearing whatever that we had at the, but we all, but God was good. <laughs> <laughs> the next test I want to say that uh, um, Reverend Whitaker put me on there is Matthew was just learning how to drive. Ooh. And <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, for some reason that day, we had two cars up Delaware. And Sam had this bright idea, Yvette, you let um, Matthew drive you home, and I'll drive the other car. And I don't know why I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got in the car, and we were, you know, we were listening to music, and Matthew, he was doing okay, till we crossed the bridge. Mm. Well, and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, all, I couldn't get him off. I couldn't get off the road in time to get the wheel. So Matt, I had to go across the bridge with Matthew, a brand new driver. And I lost it that day. So I'll never forget that. <laughs> that Sam. So that's called enduring the test. Yeah. Now the next thing is that you have to continue the mission. And continue the mission is when we were sent back to D.C. to Conti Amy Zion Church, where God has blessed us with a wonderful church family, where we continue in the mission and continue the call, where we are opening our hearts even more, maturing more, and, and watching him mature more in what God would have him to do. And I just want to say today, in front of you all, that there is not a person more committed and more in love with God than Reverend Samuel Whitaker. Amen. He's a, he's a joy to be with. We're both co-laborers in this ministry, and it's, it's, it's hard to work with somebody who doesn't do their part. And Sam, I don't have that to worry about, because Sam, does, he does his part and more. So I just want to thank you all for all of you, for all of your sacrifices, coming here and making this um, celebration wonderful. To all of you, I say, God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I told you she made a minister, right? <laughs> we, um, um, the, earlier today, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Lewis Sawyer, who is the co-chairperson of the District of Columbia uh, Reentry Task Force, Force, came to Conti Church and, and spoke and, and uh, honored uh, um, Pastor Whitaker uh, this morning um, for his service, certainly in the, um, with the uh, reentry um, um, program. We also have with us um, uh, Ms. Michelle Bonner, who is on the Correctional Information Council, and she's a board member. Chairperson. She's the chairperson. <laughs> And we're going to ask her to come and if she would give um, some remarks. Amen. Um, good evening. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity just to say a few words. I'll be brief. Um, I am on the D.C. Corrections Information Council with Reverend Whitaker, and our mandate is to inspect and monitor the prisons, halfway houses, and jails where D.C. inmates are incarcerated. As many of you know, D.C. doesn't have a prison, um, and um, those convicted of felonies are imprisoned in a hundred plus facilities across the country. And so, as crazy as we are, <laughs> we're volunteers on this commission uh, to try to reach out as, to as many of these prisons that we can to visit our DC residents who are in prison far away from home. And Reverend Whitaker, as you know, is the perfect, perfect choice to serve on this commission. And what was really funny is that um, Reverend Whitaker and I were both appointed by uh, Mayor Gray. And I'm a litigator by training, so you know I have this impression that, okay, I'm gonna be the pit bull and, and the Reverend is gonna be the, the nice conciliator who smooths things over and makes everything nice. And at our first meeting, you know, Reverend basically said, I'm not having is not right, I'm gonna let them know it's not right, and we're gonna make it right. And I was like, okay, so I don't have to be the pit bull anymore. <laughs> I can relax, because I know that he has an innate sense of what's right and what's just. And he's our compass on the commission, and, and you know, we are, we are truly grateful to, to have him do the work. And, uh, you know, and I, I really want to thank you for all that you do for the citizens of the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. You're truly a blessing. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Bonner, for those, those kind words. And I, I'm just so relieved. You know, Reverend Whitaker told me that when he went to Houston and they found out that he was in Houston, that they opened up the jail and they had to take him in. And, and then when it was ready to come back, <laughs> and, 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 and I was just praying. I didn't know whether it was, in fact, that they just let him out for some time and that he was going to have to go back. And, and, but you have clarified it so nicely today. I appreciate and understand his role on this force. It's just, just, it's just so wonderful. As... Um, 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 Sister Whitaker said, um, um, Pastor Whitaker started out at Trinity, he went to, to St. John's, then he went to Union, and then to Conti. And so we're going to have persons um, from those four societies come and make um, um, presentations and um, uh, give their words of congratulations. So in, in this order, uh, Sister uh, Maria Osborne from Trinity Church, um, the Reverend Dr. Wilma T. Frazier from uh, St. John's, um, Brother Archie Payne from uh, Union AME Zion Church, 
and then the preacher Stewart. Uh, Sister uh, Evelyn Lucas will come and they will make their, their um, remarks. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good evening. Yes, sir. Thank you. I would like to start by congratulating Reverend Whitaker from the bottom of my heart on his 30 years as a, in the ministry. I can't believe it has been a long, that long ago. I remember when we were students at Parkview Elementary School in Mr. Brazier's third grade class. Remember him? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not going to mention anything about the Martin Luther King drawing, although you already have. Uh, we, uh, I just want to say that I've watched him grow from third grade student to a musician in the Cardoza High School marching band, to a devoted husband, responsible and understanding father, young and promising minister, and now to the seasoned minister you are today. I remember when, we, when he was assigned to his first church in Odenton, Maryland. It was bittersweet for me. Bitter because the Whitaker family would no longer be part of Trinity Amy Zion Church. And sweet because as much as I didn't want to admit it, Reverend Whitaker was now a real minister. <laughs> what he and Yvette... <laughs> what he and Yvette didn't know, I just couldn't accept the fact that Sam was a minister. And it didn't hit me until he was given his own church. I remember thinking, wow, Bishop Thompson has assigned Sam to his own church. He is now a minister. No matter where the Whitaker family moved, God always made a way for me to be in walking distance of them. After they were married, they moved to Southeast, and I moved to Martin Luther King Avenue Southwest, which was very close to where they were living. Then they moved to 751 Park Row, Northwest. Soon after, I moved to the 1300 block of Euclid Street, Northwest, <laughs> just in walking distance of Park Road. As time went on, I moved a few more times, always in walking distance. God has a reason for everything, no matter how small it seems at the time. I don't know what God has in store for them in the future, but I hope I will always be in walking distance of the Whitakers. I am sure there have been many challenges and changes over the past 30 years, and I know he's learned a few things that were never taught in divinity school. Yet, he has persevered and continues to persevere because he knows that the, great, the greatest mission anyone can be on is doing the will of God. Scripture reminds us in the book of Psalms that the steps of a good man, let me repeat that, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But then there's a second part of that uh, verse that says, and he delighteth in his way. I think this is probably one of the marks of a good man. Number one, his footsteps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Reverend Whitaker, I do believe that your footsteps have been ordered by the Lord. But I believe that the proof of the pudding, so to speak, can be found in the way that how he delights in his way. Now, we do have a few ministers here with us today that can probably testify the fact that all of your ways are not going to be pleasant. 
Can I get amen? amen. But with a good man right. whose steps are ordered by the Lord, mm -hmm. he delights mm -hmm. in his way, even with the pitfalls, even with the challenges, there's a delight in his life and a delight in his footsteps. So um, the members of the St. John Amy Zion Church in Odenton, Maryland, certainly remember you as you made your maiden voyage, so to speak, in your ministry, uh, pastoral ministry, that is, at the St. John Amy Zion Church, which I must add that he did a fantastic job. And as you have moved along the ranks and have now arrived at the Conti Amy Zion Church, uh, your labors have really shown fruit. And it's really been proven that your footsteps have been ordered by the Lord and that you delight in the, in the way. We God bless you. May God continue to smile upon you. Good afternoon. My name is Archie Payne. I'm from Union Church. First, giving honor to God who is ahead of my life. I would like to recognize Bishop Richard K. Thompson, his wife, Georgia M. Thompson, in their absence, a missionary supervisor, presiding elder, all clergy, saints, family, and friends. I brought with me today the Union family. And basically, I travel with all officers. I bought the, um, the leaders of leaders. I bought the church clerk. I bought the financial person. I bought Mr. Callaway, which is the trustee. And I bought the, um, the first couple that Reverend Whitaker married when he came to Union. Hmm. And also the late council president. Oh. When Sister... Evelyn Lucas asked me to say a few words. I said to myself, yes, before I realized what task this would be. As you heard, there's a lot of things that are going to be repeated redundantly, but this is Reverend Whitaker we're speaking about. Reverend, Rick, Reverend Whitaker uh, asked me to uh, be the pastor steward. At that time, I told him yes, and I didn't have a clue. <laughs> so Reverend Whitaker said he would coach me along, and I'll be fine. He saw something in me I didn't see. So I agreed, and he kept his word and was an excellent coach. Reverend Whitaker was at Union. Uh, the membership grew. He organized the steward board, trustee board, finance board, we remodeled the sanctuary, purchased new chairs, carpet for the sanctuary, blacktop the black back parking lot, and installed a, a ramp for the special. All underneath his uh, leadership. On the first Sunday of each month after church, we would visit religiously and give communion to the sick and shut in. This gave us an opportunity to spend time together and we developed a special bond that's still special to me today. He taught me many things about the order of the church because as I said, I didn't have experience as Pastor Stewart. <laughs> I, remember tell, I remember him telling me we should always, and I repeat, we should always give thanks to the people as they allow us into their homes. Reverend Whitaker did a personal favor for me I had an aunt who lived in Washington, D.C. She became ill and had to go to a nursing home. I couldn't visit as often as I would like, so Reverend Whitaker would go by the nursing home to visit my aunt, Grace. When my sister got there to visit my aunt, Grace, she told my sister that Archie was by there. <laughs> 
God bless her. <laughs> I thank Reverend Whitaker for doing that because it eased my mind. This is the Reverend Whitaker that I know. He loves God. He's faithful, thoughtful, loving, nurturing, and caring. You can see the God in him. He is a good example to follow. I have a bookmark that I keep in my Bible. It reads, a man who followed God is always on the right path. And this is a certain described Reverend Whitaker's Christian wall. I would like to thank the family, Mrs. Lovett Whitaker, Matthew, Christina, Angela, because I know they made a sacrifice to leave their home to come to Delaware every weekend. And you heard uh, Mrs. Whitaker talk about the shoe. We appreciate your faithfulness. <laughs> to the members of Conti, I say keep on loving and caring for Reverend Whitaker because he's a special man of God. To Reverend Whitaker, I say thank you for everything you did for Union and for me and my family. Congratulations on your 30 years of service in the ministry and I pray that God continue blessing you, blessing upon you and may the the work you've done speak for you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good afternoon again. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, Reverend Whitaker, let me back up. We heard some duplicate stuff, right? Uh, he's in charge. Yes, he's in charge. He is the pastor of Conti Church, but I had a good time planning this. Uh, you'll meet uh, our, chair, our trustee chairperson, Mr. Profader, in a few minutes, but we was talking one day, and all of a sudden, Reverend comes by, and he said, oh, I've been in ministry for 30 years. So, Profader looked, at, that's what I call him, Profader. Brother Profader, I call him Profader. He looked at me, he said, you know what you got to do? I'm like, that's how we look at each other. So, I just went on a mission, and we just started. But it was so funny, because he was always asking me, Reverend Whitaker, well, what's going on? I said, none of your business. So that was my favorite thing. I was just, none of your business. So he did not know all of this was going on. He knew he was going to have a celebration, but he didn't know all of this and who all was coming. So he'll be able to greet you afterwards. But Reverend Whitaker, can you come up, please? We wanted to present him with something. It's not enough that we can do. So we just wanted to give him something that he can keep. And we uh, came up with a plaque, the committee, and we just come up with a plaque. And I, on behalf of Conti AME Zion Church, Reverend Whitaker, the plaque reads, uh, a, it has the AME Zion symbol, all of you can see it in a few minutes, uh, a man of wisdom, power, and grace, 30, dedication, 30 dedicated years of ministry presented to Reverend Samuel Whitaker, his favorite uh, Bible verses at the bottom, Matthew 6, 33. And it's got Conti AME Zion Church, March 17, 2013. So on behalf of all of us at Conti, we present you with this plaque. And we have a love token for him as well. Uh, what? Sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he just asked me, what else you going to say? Because they know me. I'm not going to say anything else. Uh, right now, uh, Reverend Gaskin, I'm just going to go while I'm here. Uh, Presiding Elder, will you come up? And we just keep it moving. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Pastor, will you come? And I'd like to make this presentation to you uh, from the Washington District. <laughs> oh. 
Hey. I want to thank uh, Pastor Whitaker, number one, for the tremendous support and leadership that he gives not only to Conti AME Zion Church, but also the leadership that he gives to the Washington District. And a personal thank you, uh, uh, Pastor Whitaker, because I know one thing I can do is I can depend on you. And I am grateful for the fact that uh, uh, it's a good thing to always know that somebody has your back. That's true. And I know Sam Whitaker has my back. Mm -hmm. And so I'm grateful for his commitment. I'm grateful for his leadership. And most of all, I'm grateful that he's obedient to uh, who God has called him to be. So this is uh, just a small plaque, and it says, I just jumped out to me because it said Samuel Whitaker when I read it. But it simply says, stand firm in your faith. On God's word, stand firm. Stand firm against fear. On his promises, stand firm. Stand firm against evil. In serving, stand firm. Stand firm in trials. In his power, stand firm. Stand firm on God's love. Amen. And so I just want to present this to you. Um, oh, we have, to do, we have to do the picture thing. <laughs> Thank you. On your 30 years of ministry, and just a small token from the Washington D District to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're um, um, very um, delighted. I'm going to ask if I can just do um, two things that are sort of not on the program. Is that all right, Pastor Stewart? I can, I'm all right? Okay. First of all, if all the ministers in the house, if you're a minister, a preacher of the gospel, if you could just stand up, we just want to acknowledge your presence here. If that's all right. I just want to acknowledge the presence of all the preachers in the house. And if, if time would permit, um, uh, I'm sure that, that Reverend Whitaker would love to hear from each and every one of you I'm fortunate, I think the people who are sitting at your table would not want to hear from each and every one of you. So I can't, I, I really would love to have you come. However, I do want to ask one of our preachers to come up and represent those of you who have come to celebrate this uh, preacher of the gospel. Uh, uh, one of our pastors in, in the Zion Church, pastors the historic Columbus Avenue AME Zion Church in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, uh, certainly a daughter of Trinity Church, and, and one who is uh, certainly a member of the family. We're going to ask the Reverend Gina Casey if she would come. Amen. <laughs> Hello. Greetings. Greetings. I wasn't expecting to say anything. I'm just very grateful that I had an opportunity to come. I had to preach this morning and get on a plane and get here in time. I was so glad that when I got here, they had just served the salad. So I was like, all right, that's wonderful. But um, God is so very, very kind. Um, Sam is such an outstanding person. And uh, I think that at this point in his ministry, I think it's just proper that this celebration would happen because I think Zion really needs to know who he is and what he has contributed. And so in representing all the ministers of Zion that are not a part of the Washington district, I want to lift him up and encourage him and let him know that um, the best is yet to come because 30 years is just the foundation. You're getting ready to take off, amen? amen. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs> Now, not only do you need a good preacher steward, but you also need a good chairperson of your trustee board. And uh, Conti need not be ashamed of their trustee chair. Um, Brother Carl Profader um, always admires uh, the work that he does at Conti Church. I'm going to ask him to come, and he's going to present the honoree for today. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Reverend Gaskin. And good evening to everyone. As we say in the craft, protocol has been established. Amen. It is a blessing to be here in this place at this time to participate in this celebration. The program lists me as introducing Samuel Whitaker. However, introducing to me means two people meeting and not knowing each other. And I don't believe there's anyone in this room that doesn't know Samuel Whitaker. Now, I could be a traditional person and read his bio, but I do not consider myself a traditional person. And it appears in the program anyhow. <laughs> I don't particularly like it when I'm assigned to introduce someone that I, that I do not know anything about. So all I can do then is read the bio. And the bio is so impersonal. But before I go any further, I want to read a poem authored by John Hall with some editing by me. It's entitled, At Day's End. Is anybody happier because Samuel Whitaker passed their way? Does anyone remember that Sam Whitaker spoke to them today? Today is almost over and the tolling time is through. It can be said in passing with a day that is slipping fast that you, Samuel Whitaker, helped a single brother of the many that you pass. A single heart is rejoicing over what you, Samuel Whitaker, said or did. And the man whose hopes were fading now with courage looks ahead. Samuel Whitaker did not waste the day or lose it, but left a trail of kindness and no discontent. As you, Samuel Whitaker, close your eyes in slumber, you'll think of God, and God will say, you have one more tomorrow by what you, Samuel Whitaker, did today. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to be here long because uh, most of you that know me, I'm not a long-winded person. I say what I got to say, and that's it. However, I want my words to be thought-producing. I make an effort to select words that reflect what's in my heart without unnecessary verbiage. In a world where words are carefully phrased, I believe in straightforwardness. I pray that the Lord would allow me to speak about Samuel Whitaker's character from the true condition of my heart. William Carey, who was a missionary to India, penned the phrase, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. That is part of Samuel Whitaker's character. He is a living sermon whether or not he preaches a word. He is a loving father and husband who understands, cares, and comforts. God enables him to live a life of respect, obedience, kindness, that is a result of being reborn through Jesus. We are here to celebrate Samuel Whitaker's 30 years in serving God as a committed and dedicated disciple. He has responded with all his heart, body, and soul to preach, teach, and carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and unbelieving world. I am grateful to God for allowing our paths to cross. I can gladly testify in the presence of Almighty God that he is accessible to the congregation 
He is sensitive to people's needs. He has inspired, motivated, and encouraged many, and especially me, along this Christian journey. I am truly blessed to be able to call Samuel Whitaker my friend, my brother, and my pastor. It is my prayer that God will continue to cover him with grace and God's multitude of mercies as he presses toward the mark of the high calling that God has placed upon his life. Now with humility, there is no need to introduce him. For again, I say I don't know anyone in this room who doesn't know him. So I will sit down, I will shut up. But first, I ask to you to stand as I present to you a true servant of the living God and a man for the ages, Reverend Samuel W. Whittaker. Y'all can sit down. <laughs> I really, I really don't know what to say. But um, let me first of all thank Diana for this picture. She gave me hair. Amen. <laughs> I got a little bush. Amen. Hadn't had one in a long time. So thank you. And thank each and every one of you for being here. Um, First of all, let me start like this. All members of St. John, stand up. All the members of St. John. That was my first appointment. And I'll never forget that appointment because when, um, when I came to the annual conference, the bishop told me, well, we have no place for you to go. They told my pastor, well, Bishop Thompson, oh, we're not going to send him any place. He's going back to Trinity. And I was sitting on the front row, you know, swinging my feet. I wasn't even paying attention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And um, they said, St. John Amazon Church, Samuel Whitaker. And somebody said, they called your name. Said, no, they didn't, <laughs> because they said they had no place for me to go. <laughs> and Bishop Hogarth started writing my name on the certificate, and off of, off of where I went in 92 to St. John Amazon Church. And amen. <laughs> and that was my first, and it has been a blessing for myself and my family. And I just thank them for letting me be or oh, learn there. <laughs> amen. Union Amy Zion Church, y'all stand up. I think they came the furthest as far as the churches. Amen, God bless you. That was our second appointment. When we went to Union, Angela was in a stroller. I, I remember taking her up those steps and um, you know, taking her in. That's, that's our first um, time at Union, Amy Zion Church. And we found a loving and just a bright congregation there. And, um, just waiting to pour out love and we loved on them and they loved on us and they've just been a blessing our whole time up there. We spent six years at St. John and seven years at Union, um, Amy Zion Church and, and I just thank God for each and every one of them and for you not calling it um, um, Nat Robbery to come down here today to be with us on um, this anniversary. Amen? Amen? And thank your pastor again for me. Amen. You know, thank him again for me because I know Pastor McNeil, you know, um, he allowed you to take the church van and allow Archie to ride you down and, <laughs> and you made it. Hey, amen. That's a good thing. And I pray that you make it back and I know you will. Hey, amen. Because Brother Archie's a good guy to be with. And Conti, Amazon Church, y'all stand. Stand up, Conti. Praise God for you. This is my eighth year with Con T, and I just thank you, and God bless you for everything that you're doing, and um, we're just loving and growing together, and, you know, and I learned from all three of my churches, no pastor can do ministry alone. That's right. You know, if the people aren't with you and you aren't with the people, you're not going to do anything right. but fail. So I just thank all of um, you for, you know, doing ministry with me, because I wasn't, huh? <laughs> because I, I'm, I wasn't doing it by myself. I was doing it with you, and we were co collaborators in ministry to help build God's kingdom, and I thank all of you. And um, for this committee, and Evelyn Lucas, um, who had spearheaded this committee, God bless you, and God thank you, Evelyn. 
God bless you, and God thank you, Evelyn, for everything that you've done and everything that the committee's done. Amen. I know it was a lot of work, and she just enjoyed telling me, don't I'm, mind your business. Don't worry about it. You know, you don't need to know nothing. She come and ask me for information. I say, what you need to know that for? Don't worry about it. Amen. So I'm glad that day is over. Now we can go back to normal. <laughs> Amen. Old Sergeant Evelyn, but, you know, she's, she got it done, so I thank her for that. And to my family, all my family stand up, everybody. My side and my wife's side. Amen. Oh, yeah, my family. Wait, sit down, Donna. <laughs> I thank you. I thank God for my family and um, for the blessings that they have been in my life. Amen. For my mother and my father, who've always been with me. They've always been there. Um, and um, Conti, Union and St. John, I quote my father often in my messages on, you know, what, how he um, brought me up. Amen. Just got finished quoting him last week when I preached, you know, because he's just been, you know, an inspirational person in my life. A man who raised eight kids. All right. Amen. Eight kids. And been a blessing to every last one of them. I just thank God for him. Amen. Amen. And to my sisters and my brothers and my, um, all my sisters and my brothers. I don't even call my in-laws my sisters and my brothers because they are my sisters and my brothers. I just love you all because they all have been a part of my ministry, helping Yvette and myself continue to grow in the Lord. So thank you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. And, and to my, um, did this go out? Hello? Oh, is this thing on? Hey, Amen. Okay. And, and to my friends, Reverend, let me start with Daryl Gaskin. Okay, now let me go to Reverend Dent. <laughs> Re Reverend Gaskin's been my friend, and he's been my friend for a long, long time. And I, I, I just love him. I just love him. I only seen him get upset one time because you, you can't rattle this man. But I, I know the one, and I'm not even gonna go through the um, 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 time that he got upset, but I saw the hair standing up on the back of his neck, and I said, I'm never gonna get on that side of him. So I said, he gonna stay my friend, amen. So I, 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 just, I just love him, and I just love his family. The Reverend Dent, if I knew he was coming, I would've stayed home, but he's here anyway now. And I just love him, and hey, look, he may have on a brown suit, but don't he look good? Yeah. Oh man, his wife cleaned him up good because he, 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 don't, he don't look this good on his own. Amen. So thank you, Bernard. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> but he's been a buddy. He's been a traveling buddy. We've been war road warriors because he's right. We've been traveling the length and breadth of um, our district when we were in the Salisbury district together. With You went from one point to the other for four hours, and sometimes it took a six-hour weekend just traveling from church to church. But I just thank Reverend Dent for that. The Reverend Walker. Amen. A man of wisdom. Hey, you just sit down and listen to Reverend Walker. He got the wisdom now. Amen. And he's, uh, he's always there. He's always there um, to help me at um, Conti. I never have to worry about a thing because if anything, he's going to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks on me. So, yeah, I mean, if I need a replacement, if I need a substitute, I know one time my voice had gone out and I think I called him on a Saturday. What was it Saturday morning or night? It, it was a Saturday, and I said, Reverend Walker, you got to preach because I don't have any voice. And he said, oh, don't worry about it, Pastor, I got it. I'm glad he had it because I sure didn't have it. <laughs> Amen. So I thank him. And Reverend Wilma Frazier. Now, when I was young in the ministry, and I was a little younger than Pastor Gaskin. Amen. No. But anyway, when I was starting in the ministry, I remember Reverend Frazier. He hadn't yet started pastoring, so I looked up to him. Because I just was watching and had to see how he carried himself. Because he got in the ministry a little bit before I did. And, you know, um, you, you never know who's looking at you. You know, I, I, never, I never even said this to him before. But I just watched him to observe him. Never asked him any questions. Never, never, even, never asked him where he even went to church. I didn't even know where he went to church. I just knew at district conference and annual conference, I would just look at him and watch him. And he is so smooth. <laughs> the way he just walks. I don't even think he walked, he just glide. Woo. <laughs> then he glide back. <laughs> but I mean that yeah, I mean that that did something for me. Amen. 
Now, I never had that glide. I got, I got to get to where I got to go. <laughs> Amen. But that man is just smooth, and I just like him. Um, like that. And to all that, I, I know I'm going to miss somebody, but I love you all. I love you all. I know I'm going to miss somebody. To Bishop Thompson, who helped me in my ministry, and he, I, I wish he was here to hear this, because he taught me how to dress. Because I remember when I just got called, I was a local preacher. I was still in the choir. And I remember coming to Trinity when we were on Park Road, and I had, I had my bicycle. And I had on my biker shorts, and I had on flex stuff. You know, I was flexing. Had my muscles going, right? Everything was tight. <laughs> and I went into the church. I went into the church because I was going to choir practice. Amen. <laughs> and choir practice was over. And I came out, and I thought I was looking good. And Bishop Thompson said, oh, Sam, come here for a minute. <laughs> I said, what is it? He said, oh, you can't be wearing that around the church. Amen. <laughs> What's wrong? This is my bike stuff. What's wrong with you? Oh, uh, you're a minister now. You, you have to dress more appropriately. <laughs> said, uh, okay, you know, and okay, I, I didn't like it, but you know, I mean, you know, wreck, wrecking my stuff. So I went to church one day and I had on a um, pink shirt, hot pink shirt, and I was looking good now, come on, I was looking good. I had on a hot pink shirt, Grace, and, and he called me again, Sam, uh, come here for a minute. <laughs> I said, yes, pastor? Oh, well, you can't be wearing a hot pink shirt in a pulpit. That just doesn't look a, a ministerially or something. <laughs> so he taught me how to dress. Amen. So I, I wish he was here to hear that. But yeah, I, you know, I learned a lot from him as um, my pastor. But not just him, from all of you. Because every place we've gone, my family is gone, you know, you deposited in us. And it helped us to grow. And I thank each and every one of you for that. And to um, my family, um, my wife, Yvette, Matthew, Christina, and Angela. You know, I truly feel that I couldn't do what I do without my family doing what they do. Because they are all a part of my ministry and what I do. Because when we minister, we minister together. You know, wherever I go, they go with me. And, you know, I, and you can tell somebody to go, but they don't have to go now. But, you know, they go, and they go gladly and happily. Um, sometimes tired, sometimes warm, but they still go so that they can minister to the people. So I just thank God for um, my family, my wife, and my children for being with me and for just ministering to me. So God bless you. And um, for my newest colleague, Michelle Bonner. I thank God for you because I'm learning from you every day you know um, and I know you're a pit bull because that, that's just the way you are that's just how God wired you but I'm learning for, from her every day from her um, legal proudness because that, that's not my expertise but every time she opens her mouth I got my ears open and if she noticed when she's talking I'm not hardly talking a whole lot because I'm listening soaking in what she has and her expertise so that we can minister to these inmates better so um, I just thank um, God for you and for everything you do. And for each and every person here, I may not have called your name, but surely because you're here, you put a deposit in my life and my family's life. And I thank you for it. And I, I just can't say thank you enough for your presence this day. You didn't have to come, but you did. And we are just so grateful that you are here today. And last but not least, Oh, well, let, let me say the AE dancers. Thank you, Christina, and those dancers. Amen. God bless you. And for Angela for singing that solo, um, God bless you. Dancing. Hmm? Dancing. Dead don't count. Amen. No, thank you, Reverend Dead. Thank you for singing that solo. Amen. You know and to my elder, the Reverend Dr. Rita J. Colbert. Let's give her a hand. When I came to this district, or when Bishop Brown appointed me to this district, I think he appointed us in the same annual conference, because she's been here the same number of years that I have. So um, we, we sort of grew together, I guess, on the Washington district, as it is um, formulated now. And I just thank her for being my elder. You know, um, you can always go to her and talk to her, and she will always give you an answer. She will always, you know, give you a loving ear. 
you know, I'm, I'm, she gives that motherly affection because women just do that naturally. Amen. So if you need a hug, she got you. Amen. So um, I just thank God for her and for everything that she has been because she's been part of the ministry at Conti since we've been together. And I can't do what I do without a good elder looking out over me and praying for me in my congregation. So thank you, Reverend Dr. Rita Colbert. And did I leave anybody out of that? Oh, um, that's why you have a help meet. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a check now. Amen. The video. Who did that, Brother Jerome? Jerome, thank you. Amen. That's Jerome Rivers. Jerome Rivers, thank you, Jerome. And are you videoing this? Yes, sir. Am I looking good? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jerome. Hey, Amen. Matthew. Huh, Matthew? Matthew. Oh, Matthew, and God bless you. Amen. Matthew runs just about, Matthew does whatever you want to do. Amen. But I think, thank God for Matthew being here. Okay, um, my wife said that's it. So that must be it. But again, thank you. I want to shake all of your hands before you leave. So don't leave without shaking my hand because I love you all and my family loves you all. And um, I think, um, Trinity. oh, Trinity. No, no, I got to say Trinity. Please stand up, Trinity. Amen. <laughs> Amen. No, Trinity, stand up. This is where I started my ministry. Amen. And if they, if they heard me preach my first sermon, they heard me preach on Park Road. <laughs> Because that, that's where we were. And I just thank you for being here today. And I thank you for being a part of my ministry my whole life. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've been here just about my whole life. My whole development. I mean, you know, I mean, Yvette was in the youth choir. You know, y'all raised her up. Or at least enough until I can get there. So thanks for holding us. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. And last but not least, this is a bottle of cider. Okay, this is cider, okay? And we're going to give this to you as a gift. <laughs> Amen. So, look, if you don't want it, give it to me. I'm going to take it home. I'll drink it. Amen. <laughs> and right now, I, I am done, Sister Evelyn. So, again, thank you. God bless you. I'm, I'm going to let the elder say the benediction since the bishop was on. Um, is that okay? Well... Let us close with the benediction. We're going to um, get ready to roll out of here. Amen? Amen? So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this celebration. We thank you for this good time that we had in you, Father. For as we uplift the man of God, Father, we uplift you. So we just give you the praise, honor, and glory for everything that we've seen and heard and felt in this place. For the times down memory road that we took, we thank you. Because as we look back over our life, we can truly say that we have been blessed. So we thank you, Lord, for blessing us. For we know without you, we would be nowhere. But with you, we're every place in you. So we thank you and give you the honor, glory, and praise. And as we depart from this place, may we not depart from your presence. And when we depart from this place, may we arrive at our destination safely and continue to give you the praise for all that you've done. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a safe evening. Oh. Yeah, Arch.